channel and there is some here to share with you about my stock account. Today my stock account has made a total loss of 3,123 US dollars when it's closed. US stocks close to higher on bank stocks. The market focused on banking risk, steady prices or to save the market. Paul did not want to do what to do the multiple choice questions. In my stock account today, including the post market price, I've made a total loss of 5.31% or $4,360. Right now, the total asset of my the net asset of my account is $77,753.89. Today, SQQ closed lower to 37.46, and the RV closed lower, of made a loss of 3.12% to 51.88. Today's market marks a a most gain for most of the industries. Dow Jones Industrial Average and all three U.S. major indexes closed higher. Dow Jones Industrial Average closed 1.06% higher. Nasdaq Composite closed 2.14% higher, and S&P 500 rose for 1.65% to 3,3919.29. U.S. stocks closed higher on Tuesday with the Dow up more than 300 points. Led by banking sectors, data shows that U.S. February CPI was in line with expectations. Amira and the Deutsche, forecast, Deutsche Bank forecast that the Fed will cut interest rates after the bank bankruptcy of Silicon Valley banks and the signature banks. Investors, investors see whether the banking risks will spread. Wells Fargo, Citigroup, Barclays, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and other large U.S. bank stocks rose. Regional bank stocks rebounded strongly. Blake, Blakely Financial Group Chief Investment Officer Peter Vukvar said, Given how much the bank stocks suffered on Monday, their rally is de it deserved. In my view, the challenge for banks is more about the profit outlook than the business feasibility. Charlie Ripley, Vice President of Portfolio Management at Allianz Investment Management said, The joint statement by the Fed and the Treasury on the support of withdrawals from the Silicon Valley Bank has somehow changed the market sentiment or changed the trend. Investors need some time to dig into the details and see whether the, where the real risk lies. After the collapse of Silicon Valley, Valley Bank at Signature Bank, some investors thought it would mean the Fed, the Fed would suspend further rate hikes. Many professionals, including Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, attributed the Silicon Valley Bank failure to the Fed's continued aggressive interest rate hike. The Fed's aggressive rate hike led to how lower bond prices, a rapid loss of commercial bank deposits, and massive capital outflows, leading to the bankruptcy of Silicon Valley Bank. Goldman Sachs Securities predicts, predicts that the Fed will not raise interest rates at its March meeting. Nomura also predicted that the Fed would cut interest rates by 25 basis points in March after predicting a 50 basis point increase. In a report released on Tuesday, Nomura said the Fed is expected to cut an interest rate by 25 basis points at its FOMC meeting in March to counter looming financial risk. Other market participants believe the Fed will cut interest rates by 100 basis points by the end of December. Exchange strategist George Saravolos at Deutsche Bank said in a note on Tuesday, the market is pricing at a Fed rate cut ra rather than one. The yield curve is largely st is sharply steeper. The commodities and stocks are falling, and clinical products are cyclical products are not performing well. All in line with incoming recession. Everscore ISI's Julian Emanuel said on Monday that what we saw last week, the Silicon Valley Bank came bankruptcy, was the first wave of the Fed's tightening effects. We're going to fall into a recession. Well, it might be wild. It may be wild. We believe stocks will retest their October lows. However, we'll eventually get the buying opportunity that has been waiting for nearly two years to start the next bull market phase. An accelerated rise in the core consumer price index, CPI, may strengthen the Fed's determination to raise rates. But the next week will be a tough decision as the, final, the financial turmoil continues to worry. Core CPI excluding food and energy rose 0.5% in February month to month and 5.5% year in year, according to the, C the data released by the S Labor Statistics Bureau on Tuesday. Overall, the CPI rose 0.4% month to month and 6% year on year. Economists believe that the core CPI reflects the underlying inflation trend better than the overall CPI. 
The Fed's problem is now where to start between the inflation and financial risks. Over the weekend, the regulator stepped in decisively after the collapse of Silicon Valley banks and announced a new mechanism to protect all unsecured depositors. The CPI data suggests the Fed can't wait. The Xerox Tang, an LH mayor, monetary policy analytics economist, the weekend of government inter- intervention is designed to contain the federal to the financial crisis and create room for continued tightening of monetary policy. They do not want to make a choice between financial stability and price stability. Here we can see that the change in CPI, in in core CPI, f- for the past few for the past few years. While well, bank stocks are showing signs of stabil- stabilizing, Mr. Paul and his colleagues may fear the risk of tightening policy, monetary policy too early when they fail to make a clear judgment on the impact of the collapse. Moreover, a large cumulative 500 for 450 basis points rate hike over the past year has put pressure on the financial sector, as Silicon Valley banks will suggest that the lagging effects of past rate hikes are starting to emerge. Raising a 25 basis point hike is a tough decision for the Fed, he said, saying Kathy Bostetik, sorry, chief economist at Nationwide Life Insurance Corporation. A financial market signal that their emergency action on Sunday re- eased the financial pressure. Fed officials would be persuaded to raise rates by 25 basis points. However, she noted that inflation is not the Fed's only concern, as financial stability and lending conditions will still need to be considered. Renaissance Macro Research LLC, now the te- head of U.S. economic research, said the details of the CPI report did not encourage the Fed, and prices for core services, not including housing, were still accelerating. Today's CPI is a reminder that the battle against inflation is not over yet, he wrote. Dr. Dota expects a 25 basis point rate hike next week, which would have been 50 basis point if it hadn't been for the Silicon Valley Bank event. Thank you for listening. That's all I have for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.